When designing for the mine environment, engineers often use geosynthetics to provide reinforcement at the base of the structure. Typical products are high strength geotextiles and geogrids to provide a reinforcing and separation function. Here you can get a sense of the enormous scales involved. Ore is held in stockpiles before being loaded for transport. These stockpiles are very wide and high and will be placing enormous loads on the underlying soil. Before the stockpile is built, the base soil is reinforced, in this case with a high strength geotextile. In this case, a geogrid is used. Geogrids are typically used for lower height embankments and stockpiles. It is not uncommon for both a geogrid and a high strength geotextile to be used together. In this case, to support a causeway embankment over extremely weak soils in a mangrove swamp. Without the geosynthetics, large volumes of imported fill would be required. In remote areas, imported fill is very difficult and costly to source. Most often, railways are used to transport the mined materials from pit to port. Some mine operations are large enough to warrant building their own railways. When designing railways, engineers are concerned with differential settlement and track deflection. This results in speed restrictions and the need for more frequent maintenance. As well as providing strength at the base of a railway, a geogrid also holds the ballast in place horizontally. This reduces settlement and deflections. Here is a railway for a coal mine. A geotextile and a geogrid have been placed underneath the railway formation to minimise deflections and settlement. The geotextile provides the separation function. It prevents the soil beneath from rising into the rail ballast to be placed and thereby reduces uneven settlement of the rail track over time. Here we can see the rail ballast being placed on the rails. The geogrid also prevents lateral movement of the ballast, helping to hold it in place. We now consider retaining structures and the particular demands they face in mining. Retaining structures are found in all sorts of civil engineering projects. They allow the designer to control the geometry of earthworks and therefore make better use of the available space. As we have said, mine sites, in particular open cut mines, can be considered as massive earthworks projects. Retaining structures are frequently used to control the grade and the profile of the site. The engineer may use retaining structures anywhere within the mine. This large retaining structure is a dump wall. This retaining structure is used to support a haul road. Often, engineered structures may be built simply to allow the mine to function in difficult terrain. In the absence of built infrastructure, retaining structures are often used as the building blocks of a mine site. Particular challenges for retaining structures in the mining arena are use of in situ materials, excessive loads, remote locations, dynamic requirements of the site, the topography of an operating site is continually changing. Consider access ramps and benches as an open cut mine is excavated deeper and deeper. To explore the use of geosynthetics in mine related retaining structures, we shall look at three typical applications. Slopes, dump walls, rockfall protection. In mines, 
engineers often need to build slopes steeper than the internal angle of friction of the given material. These slopes will fail without proper consideration of reinforcement and drainage. This is particularly important in remote areas with no existing drainage infrastructure. High rainfall, even if very rare, can have a devastating effect. Failure mechanisms and design inputs are the same as outlined in the previous lecture of this series. Focus on the reinforcement function. This retaining structure supporting a hall road requires a near vertical face. Behind the gabion wall, geosynthetic drainage and reinforcement products are used. Here is an example of a slope cut from the earth rather than built up. Geosynthetic products can still play a useful role to protect these structures. Erosion control products can help vegetation to grow on the steep slope to resist erosion. All slopes can be weakened by the build-up of water pressure within or behind. When geosynthetic reinforced slopes are built, the engineer often incorporates drainage paths to accommodate surface runoff. In mining situations, high capacity drainage solutions are often required. In this slope under construction, we can clearly see the geosynthetic drainage layer, near vertical at the back face, covered by a geotextile and a horizontal geogrid reinforcement layer. The slope face is a rock-filled gabion in front of a geotextile filtration layer. In the completed structure, only the facing gabions can be seen. The hidden geosynthetic components ensure its useful working life through the life of the mine. Dump walls are a particular type of retaining wall commonly found in mine sites. A large structure that allows a truck to dump material vertically, such as into a crusher. These structures can be in excess of 25 metres high and need to withstand very high vertical and horizontal loads. Some must also be designed to withstand movement, such as seismic and underground works. Geosynthetics provide a reinforcement function in dump walls. They hold the vertical facing in place by securing it to the backfill material. Dump walls provide easy access for mining vehicles to tip their massive loads into processes such as crushers or even directly onto conveyors. You can see that the sizes are very large and the loads extreme. The walls are vertical. They are often built with conveyors and other infrastructure. Vertical settlement must be controlled to prevent the infrastructure from becoming out of alignment with the wall itself. As with all reinforced walls, geogrids are still used to tie the wall front face to the soil behind and maintain the horizontal alignment of the system. Risk of rockfall is high in mining operations. Mitigation of this hazard is a key part of the safety system on any mine site. Rockfall protection systems can be considered active or passive. A passive system controls the impact of the detached rock. It doesn't prevent the fall from occurring. Rather, it controls its trajectory. An active system stabilizes the rock mass. It aims to prevent falls. High-risk locations for rockfall are tunnel entrances, vertical faces and railway cuttings.